All right, you guys catch that? It helps <laughs> if I make that sound. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you guys, we are live here on the Brush by Brandy Facebook page and also over on my YouTube channel. Grab me an apron too. What? Grab an apron. My name is Brandy. I'm Sean, nice to meet yeah, you. Sean, nice to meet you. I'm gonna put an apron on. Prefer to paint wearing an apron. Okay. Um, because it's really like a giant bib for grown-ups. That's how I think of aprons. It's like it's like wearing a bib. Are you going to the barbecue? When, when you're an adult. Yeah, if I was going to like a crab feed. Well, I think yeah. we call it barbecue. I think in Texas it's not barbecue. It's, yeah. It's yeah, nice. if we were going, well, our kids are having a crab feed. One of their sports teams is having a crab feed. It's a thousand dollars a table. What? Yeah. Oh. And we were like, um. I already give you enough. <laughs> We make just, it stop. We just make a donation and call it good because we don't eat crab, nor do we pay a thousand dollars a table. Yeah. <laughs> table of three. Yeah. <laughs> that's all the table fits. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I know that's normal for a crab eat, and especially when it's a fundraiser. Um, okay, so you guys, my name is Brandy. I am the owner and artist behind Brush by Brandy. My husband Sean is the one that you hear behind the camera, <laughs> as always. Um, we are going to do some painting and I started this piece with you guys last week and I made some changes that you guys might notice. I started out with a three color blend on this one and you guys know when I do my first coat, it's usually me kind of working out the process in my head and conceptualizing. You really got to move these pieces. <laughs> so you, can, yeah. you can scoot that one down that way. Will that help? And then you'll have like a little bit. I mean, these guys are totally getting like your pores. Are they? Yeah. I think my skin looks nice and clear right now. So you guys are lucky. It's a good day. Um, so the first, the first coat is usually me working out a concept in my head. And on this one, I chose to go ahead and eliminate that third color. So I had a gold in the center that I was working with and it was really pretty, but I feel like it's going to be way too busy on this piece for what I'm doing. And so I eliminated that, that third color and I'm just going to work with a two color blend on this one. And I think that's plenty because I'm adding transfers. This is a custom order. Um, for a customer that she chose from my inventory. Um, and we're going to do a resin top on it because it's going to be um, a bathroom vanity. Some of you guys wanted me to do that resin live on camera, but the problem is um, you, have to, you have to move so quickly and and there's I, I wouldn't even be able to talk. And so I prefer to record it in um, on a, on camera and then I can edit it and make a make a video of the relevant portions and I can talk through it um, So I you like I only get one chance at it. And so if I do it live, I can't do a, a, a you know um, A regular video to edit down. So it was it's kind of a one or the other deal. Oh interesting Adriana says you talk too much. Oh, do I? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right Well, it's a live video. So if I didn't talk it would be the worst live video ever um, these, the live videos, you guys, I answer, I say this all the time, the live videos I do every week, I do a live video and I do an edited video and the live videos are longer. They're more in depth. It's more like taking a class, right? And if you go take a class at like a college and the instructor doesn't speak to you, everybody's going to fall asleep. So this is a live video. It's supposed to be very in depth, more instructional. If you prefer the other format of an editor tutorial, those are available too. So there's a little something for everybody. Um, and then those are edited down to just the most relevant portions. So, I mean, really, like that should never be a comment I hear because it just means you're on the wrong video. Uh, comment from the back of the class. Can yes. you please shut your mouth? Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate you. <laughs> that that yeah. wasn't from uh, that wasn't from anybody. That's just coming from Sean. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> Yeah, so, I, and there's video shorts. So if you really just want the 30 second version, you can get that too. There's something for everybody. You can go uh, pick your flavor of video. All right, so um, so this one, I eliminated that third color. So I'm just working in two colors and it's Wise Out Paint in um, Black Cherry is my purple. And then I've got Weather Vane is the dark gray. And I started out also with Carbon as my dark dark gray but it was it's really a it's really dark and it looked almost black um and i actually want to darken these corners a little bit with some wax so i think we might start out doing um i start out with my wax Let's see. are you gonna talk to us while you do your wax i know yeah apparently not good lord <laughs> okay so let me push this over a little bit and i think i'm gonna um do a little bit of wax work on this one to show you what i mean by i'm going to 
um, kind of accentuate with some wax. So my third color ends up just being a little bit of wax instead of an actual third paint color. So what I'm gonna do with my wax is this is Annie Sloan wax. I like her wax. I actually melted mine down with my heat gun just cause it was getting kind of gnarly looking. This is a really old can. Are these dated? You can't tell. 1972. Yeah. It has a 16 on there, but is this really from 2016? I don't think so. It might be. Mm. I don't know. I combined it a couple times from almost empty tins. So, okay. And then this is just a synthetic bristle brush. Um, this is a non-branded one, but just kind of a, a junky synthetic. Uh, um, synthetic. Yeah, I think this is synthetic. Just kind of a fluffy synthetic bristle brush. And I'm going to just dip the, the ends of my bristles into that wax. This wax is fairly hardened. It's um, not super fresh and soft like a brand new tin. Um, to get it like this, at first I like to leave the lid off my wax so it will harden a little bit. Wait a minute, I think I missed something up in here. What? Uh, just because I saw it's, uh, is it Paula's birthday? Is it Paula's birthday? Did I blow <gasps> by that comment? Looking at, you know, other not favorable ones? Is it? Paula, happy birthday. You guys, is this everybody, true? everybody wish Paula a happy birthday. I didn't even know that. I guess she wouldn't message me and be like, hey, just so you know, today's my birthday. Oh, wait, what? What'd she oh, say? Fireball June, it's uh her 60th birthday cake. So when was the birthday? Fireball oh, June's I get... birthday too? What? What the? You guys are blowing my mind right now. Emily. What the? Emily. Uh, yes, it is Paula's birthday. Oh my gosh, happy birthday, Paula. What? And Emily had a birthday this week too. Emily from Weathered Hearts and Paula, Fireball June. Fireball oh my gosh. June? My birthday. Paula's was yesterday. My birthday is coming up in two weeks. Oh, what? Yeah. We're, are we all Aries, you guys? That would explain a lot. I'm going to have to step that, aside. That, I got some shopping. That would explain why you do. guys are my people. Or are you guys, let's see, what's before Aries? Is it, is it Pisces? Or Aquarius? No, yeah, no. Is, I, is it Aquarius, then Pisces, then Aries? What are you? I'm Aries. But, Somebody um, tell me if Aries and Aquarius should be together. Uh, no, Just throwing it out there. They shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> you, it's something you should have looked into a few years ago. I think, uh, you know. The planetary alignment is working my, against it. My oldest son is also an Aquarius. And, like, you can definitely tell the similarities between the two. And yes, Sue, it is. Oh, oh yeah, Paula is Aries. Yes, um, that's why you guys are my people. Sue says it is. Yeah, your birthday is on tax day. Yep. Yeah. That way, I, I've said it before. I've always said it. Uh, if I forget, I'm screwed two ways. Yeah. Yeah. By the IRS and. Yep. Sleeping on the couch. Yep. All right. So I just barely. I'm going to talk through this side, but I just really? barely tipped the edges of that. Are you seriously going to talk more? I know. Sorry. Who was that that made the comment? Yeah. Uh, is there a mute? Is there a mute button? Yeah, there is. Okay. We'll just... It's the X. Okay, for her. this is for her. <laughs> it's the X feature. Yeah. Just the, click that. The skip button. Yeah. Um, my son went to swim tonight, the swim team practice, and they said if I did gaming on live that, that the kids on the swim team would watch it. And so I was like, can you just tell them that I'm going to do gaming? And they'll tune in and be like, wait, your mom is painting it. But then by then they'll be hooked, you know? So apparently teenagers aren't big on the painting tutorials. Who would have thought? Yeah, it's a shame. Youth, what the? Youth oh, youth society days. is just going, yeah, yeah, hell in a handbasket. Yeah. So all I did was tip that corner just a little bit, and that's going to kind of just be enough to be my third color. Let's come down here and do, a, I'm going to do a little bit on this door. It's, it's not a lot. Just to darken these corners up a little bit. And that's kind of why I didn't want the carbon, because carbon is a, is a nice, deep, more of a charcoal weather vane's a little bit lighter and so it lets me get still some variation with the black wax so i you know i change my colors sometimes and that's kind of what happened on this one just refining the process a little bit once i looked looked at it and thought about adding the transfers the transfer that i have on here is the magnolia transfer from redesign with prima it's really really pretty and i don't even have the full transfer on here we're going to add a little bit of the transfer tonight too um, I don't have the full transfer on because I'm going to layer it with another transfer. And so usually when I use a transfer like this, I actually will make sure that I use the full transfer. And that's kind of my goal with this. I feel like this is a drinking game. How many times are you going to say transfer? Transfer. Okay, just checking. Wait, are you supposed to be drinking behind the yeah. camera too? Not again. Yeah. 
What if you already showed up to the live and you were already like snockered? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as drunk as you could get. Well, we were. I was in the store tonight with um with my oldest. We were shopping for Easter stuff, and he, and they had the they have the um. What'd you get me? They have Jack Daniels and Coke mixed already, like pre mixed. Oh yeah, you don't <laughs> want to waste like, time. Like if you're too lazy to mix the Jack and Coke yourself, and yeah, yeah. he was like, well, maybe you're just too drunk to mix it yourself. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if the portion is another, off, you will not know. So yeah. another valid reason. That's what you said. He said, well, maybe some people don't know the mixture. And I was like, I don't think it's like a precise recipe to make a Jack and Coke. Well, it's right up there with the wine, right? You bring out the good stuff at first, and then yeah. the crap ends up coming later because nobody knows. Um, no, I, I was only down the aisle because I went um, I went wine tasting in Southern California with... Um, the, the owners of Surf Prep, and I bought this peach champagne, and I was so looking forward to it, and I left it at my friend's house on New Year's. And so I'm looking for this peach champagne. I'm pretty devastated about it. it. Sounded so good. Okay, all right. So Amanda's in Tennessee. She likes the Jack and Coke um, in the can. It's a perfect mix. Oh, okay. interesting, okay. I always wonder, like, do, do they go a little light or a little heavy? I'm, I guess yeah. they would always go a little light. That's that's a you know a crappy pour. They got to make more money on it. So you can see the difference here. These two doors. This is the one I added the little bit of wax to, and it just adds a little bit of shading in some of the corners. Let me scoot this part over here a little tiny bit more. It's not a huge difference. It's very subtle, but I just like the. This is kind of my little bit of aging. What do you seal that wax with? Oh my gosh, this question kills me every time. All right, you guys. I'm, Can you not talk about it though? I'm a rule breaker. I know, because because I have to explain this. I feel like I need a I need like on uh, one of those disclaimers that scrolls through the page every time I'm doing this, so people are like. It's like super quick. Yeah, yeah. might might cause indigestion. Might give you headaches. But you don't kids. you don't focus. It it has to be like might cause may cause indigestion. Blah 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 <laughs> blah blah blah. Super you know? fast. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so I, cause an arm to fall I am off. putting wax on. This is on raw paint, okay? I am going to seal this in clear coat. It is so very, very, very little wax. This does not work with every brand. This is so very little wax that I just use for a tiny bit of shading. Um, I do seal this with clear coat. Water-based clear coat. I wait, promise you it hold works. On. Wait, what? I also want to say this, I am working against manufacturer's recommendations, so I know any errors that happen are on me. Here are some errors that can happen. If I put too much wax on, it's going to repel the clear coat. It can make the clear coat get foggy. So, they, I mean, these are all things that I'm telling you because I understand that there's a risk involved. And anytime you're going off label to use something, um, you know, there is recommended uses when, when you're not going to get any of those hazards and I am choosing to take a risk here so um, I am using a, an oil-based wax it it absolutely works like I said does it work with every brand um, I do this on most all of my pieces so 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 little wax really it's just residue that's kind of in my brush and I will seal over this with with my clear coat. With my, I'll use Wiesel uh, matte varnish is what I really like to use. I like the matte varnish because it's got this just beautiful low sheen. It does it um, is made with crystal clear resins, so it's it's just got a beautiful like crystal clear. You know when you put it on, I don't know how to explain it. It's just got a beautiful finish to it. I love the sheen, the finish. It's not going to yellow. It sprays nicely. It brushes nicely. Um, it's got nice durability to it. Like it's just, I, I just really like the clear coat. Uh, Wiesel matte varnish. Um, this is their paint. Works great with their paint. So that's all I'm going to do to those center drawers. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the same thing I did on this center drawer over here. I'm going to just do this top row for now because this is kind of where I want to focus on some of my next steps. And so I'm just going to get this corner here and then I feel like I can move on to the next step at least, but I will do this to every single drawer. I'm really just catching that corner and it just is a like a little dry brushing for some shadowing. Um, the colors will all deepen when I clear coat this. So even when you don't notice, that probably looks really, really subtle on camera right now, but when I clear coat this, 
you will see, and these colors will deepen. When I dip this brush into the wax, I'm literally just tapping it on the top. If it picks up any excess, I can actually lay it off. You can see I have a spot right here um, on my furniture dolly where I had... Um, where you were testing it? Yeah, no, I laid my brush off uh -huh. here to just take off some of the wax so that it's so little on my brush. I really just want it to pick up this molding here on the edge and just kind of highlight that a little bit just on those edges. So that's kind of my plan with the wax. Oh, I'm now that I set up, you want to move? Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, I'm going to go back to that other drawer so you can stay where you are. All right, you guys want to see what else I'm going to add to this? This is a, a little bit maximalist of a finish. And I'm pretty excited about it. So the transfer that I have on right now is from Redesign with Prima. It's called Magnolia. And I'm also going to add this one. Trying to widen the lens so you get to see. How pretty is that? This is the Harlequin transfer from Redesign with Prima. Um, this is the packaging. This is the gold Harlequin. It also comes in a silver and a black. Oh, I noticed that too. It's how uh, stars. I got the notification that stars are back. Did I get stars back? What? Oh my gosh, you guys brought it up last week. And I'm not kidding you. I got a thing that said, you know, um, you, it, it has to do with something and, and it thinks I'm not in the United States. That's what it was. It said you were in a country that does not allow stars. And I'm like, but the United States does. We yeah, all know 50 that. Of them. Yeah, exactly. And stripes too. Um, and so I sent in an appeal and I haven't noticed because obviously I haven't been on live, but um, so I guess I have my Got stars em. back. Yeah. They yeah. must have been like, oh yeah, she's not foreign. She's, I, I think it happened when I was in Australia. They thought I was in Australia. Does Australia not allow stars? Some of you guys are in Australia. I think it they might be Australia even. that doesn't. Um, it, it's probably because they, it's it's like, it feels like it's like panhandling. Getting stars is, is like panhandling. Where are you going? Okay, so here's what I plan to do. So I've got my Magnolia transfer. I'm going to run a little bit of this Harlequin off of the Magnolia. Okay, and it's going to be a little bit of gold, a little bit of shimmer on here. This is a metallic transfer. So can you guys see? It's kind of a warm antique gold. Let's see how this matches with my hardware. This is my hardware up here that I painted. It's a little bit darker than my hardware, but I think that's going to be okay once they're together. I can also choose to darken my hardware so it's a little bit more of this kind of coppery gold. Um, my hardware, this is my original hardware. These go on here. And um, I cleaned this, I soaked it in white vinegar and um, water overnight and it cleaned up pretty well, but it was a little kind of a dingy gold. And so I chose to go ahead and paint these, but seeing it next to my transfer, I'll probably just layer a little bit of a darker gold over top. These are just spray paint. And then I just put a clear coat of clear lacquer, a satin lacquer over top. So it's not super high gloss. It's just got a nice low sheen on it. All right, so let's work on my placement of this transfer. I'm gonna take it, um, this is two sheets. I'm gonna go ahead and roll one of these up and put it back in the package just so I don't end up ruining it while I'm only working with one. I actually have two of these transfers because my other plan is I think I wanna put some on the inside here. The thing I need to check with before I do the inside is this is going to be plumbed for, um, um, sink plumbing. It's going to be a bathroom vanity. I don't know if these drawers are going to be removed completely and if they are then I won't add anything because of if they're not going to be even in place. She had indicated that they, I don't know if they'll keep the drawer fronts and just, you know, drill through the centers of them or if they're going to come out completely. So I need to check on that first. All right, so my transfer, I want to run across these center drawers. I'm gonna put another flower here. So we're gonna layer these transfers. So this first drawer here, I'm gonna run it right into my magnolia and I wanna center a line right along here with my hardware. So kind of right there is what I'm thinking. And the I'll, lacquer, just random, but the lacquer that you used it for your spray? It's Minwax just from the hardware store. It's a clear spray lacquer um, from the hardware store. It's nice over, show. Yeah, it's over on the shelf if you want to go. It's a black can Freezo. from Minwax satin finish. All right, so I'm going to pull this drawer out and I hope you guys can see. 
Um, if not, Sean will be back in a second. He went to go get that piano lacquer. And I'm going to go ahead and peel back my clear backing sheet now that I kind of have an idea where my placement will be. And I'm going to run this transfer along the center line of my drawer right into those magnolias. And let's see, I want to make sure my Harlequin is centered with roughly the same amount on the top as on the bottom. And I need a transfer stick. Let me check, check the other. Is there one in here? Min, uh, min wax. Yeah. Solid black can, black lid. Oh, there we go. Okay. Thank you for the description. It's what I'm here for. <laughs> well, if you could just talk to us, I would greatly appreciate it. All right. Okay, can I show it real quick? Yeah. So that's the, the clear lacquer I use. I have it in a gloss and a satin, um, and I, I'll just seal the hardware in that. Oh, I guess I'll show them. It's not right required, and I, um, in case. it adds a little bit of durability onto your hardware, but I really like that brand. The finish on it is really pretty in the satin, um, and it just adds a little bit of durability. It actually wears really well, and here's how I know that. Um, we, in our last house, I spray painted all of the door hardware. The door handles uh, was dummy handles, so they didn't get like friction or anything. I spray painted them all. They were like that for, we lived in that house for 10 years. Oh yeah, on the big the doors. Yeah, yeah, to bronze hardware. It was yeah. gold, like shiny brass, old hardware. And I spray painted all, it wore beautifully. And yeah. then if I ever did need to touch it up. Simple, yeah. Super easy to touch up. You just take the hardware off and touch it up a little bit, but. I want to say I didn't even do that until maybe we sold the house and I had like one, you know, that maybe hit a wall or something. Okay, what I'm going to do, um, this is going to be long enough that I will need to seam this end. When I need to seam a transfer, it has a little clear halo on the side of it. I'm going to cut that off because when I go to seam this, um, I don't want to overlap that edge. So I just cut off that clear printing. And then when I seam it, I can butt these right up against each other and I'll have a nice clean seam. I'm not cutting onto the printing. I'll show you guys when I take this off. I'll cut down to three of these. Okay, there's no gold on here. This is what I cut off, but I did cut off the clear edge off the edge of that transfer. I can see it on there. You guys probably aren't able to see it. There's no gold on there. I just cut right up to the edge. Okay, quick question. No. DIY yes. black wax that yes. is soft and with water uh, in the container. Periodically, I add clear wax, hoping to even it out. Should I dump the water and leave off the lid? Uh, uh, it's a DIY wax is an oil based is a, a oil based wax. Also, I don't think that's a water based wax. I don't think the water would ever truly incorporate. If you need to re-soften wax, you can use mineral oil-based wax. You can use mineral spirits. I apologize, I'm not super familiar with DIY wax. I know it's a nice wax. I hear really good things about it, um, and I, but I'm not sure. I think it's an oil-based wax, and if it is, that water's not going to want to incorporate very well. If it's a water-based wax, I don't know. I have DIY wax, but I'd have to go dig it out and see. Um, if it's oil based, you can use like a, um, you can incorporate another oil if you're trying to soften it. You can mix it with clear wax to try to soften it. I will usually just add a little tiny bit of mineral spirits and it will soften it back up. But that's petroleum based waxes. Okay, I'm going to center my transfer again. I kind of dry fit it right about, I'm going to run it right kind of on the fence about this. You know what? I'm going to put it here. And I'm gonna cut the edge of this transfer off. In my mind, it works. After a tool. That razor knife, you see it? Where did you? You have it? You have it. Oh, it's right here. All right, I want this to kind of overlap with this flower just a little bit. I'm gonna kind of cut out the edge of this transfer. Just gonna kind of mark it. And I'm gonna cut this so that my flower still shows on these spots. Trust me, it will make sense. Okay, and I'm just gonna cut this. You need that for you. No. I just don't want that to adhere, and it's gonna to want to. And then I'm gonna 
cut along the edge of this flower. And I have to do this with the, without the backing sheet on there. Just being very careful. So see what I did? I conformed that around the edge of my flower. The other option is I could have attached my um, flower second, but obviously that's not what I did. So I'm working with what I've already got on here. Okay, let's go ahead and attach this. Once I press it down with this stick, I pressed it into place. Okay, and I'm gonna go, go ahead and I'm gonna wrap it around this molding right here. So I've got my transfer tool and I'm gonna press it into that first molding. And then I'm gonna press it into the second. So I kind of walk it down the stairs. Like I'm stair stepping each level of that molding. If you just try to do it all at one time, you're gonna end up with a really messy transfer application and it's gonna wanna tear. I need to turn this. I'm gonna use my razor knife and I'm gonna cut off the excess at the bottom. I'm holding this at kind of a 45 degree angle. And this is my um, portion that I'll save and I'm gonna run this end to end. Oh, sorry, Sherry. Software. So uh, today, I don't think there's any today as far as birthdays. Paula. I thought it was Paula's birthday. Uh, yesterday. Oh, Fireball yesterday. June. Happy birthday, guys. Okay, and now I can wrap this uh, edge of the transfer around this corner. Now I'm gonna do the same thing up here on the top. So this, um, because I centered this line, I've got excess up here on the top and I wanna cut this off too. Um, you know what, I'm not gonna cut that just yet because I don't wanna end up cutting it short. So I'm gonna go ahead and seat this transfer, same thing. I'm going to rub it into this first uh, corner molding. Okay, and then I've got another one under that. I'm going to hold it down and push it into there. And I just kind of walked it down. And now I can seat this part onto this. Now I'm onto this level here. So I just go one level at a time. You can't just cut it and then, you know, pull it around those curves. It's not going to want to conform. Paula says she's this. She's this many old. This many she's, hold, old? she's holding up all her fingers and toes. <laughs> you must have a Not lot really sure how you hold up your toes, but okay. You must have a lot of toes. A lot of toes. All right, and then I'm going to find a corner on my transfer, and I'm going to start pulling this clear backing sheet back. I know transfers aren't the most entertaining thing to watch go on, but I really think there is an art to applying a transfer. the design process. The other option I could have done on here would have been a Harlequin <laughs> stencil, but I like the actual metallic sheen that I'm getting from this transfer. Paul says, because she's a mutant. <laughs> I will add to that. If you can do that, you are one egg of a tree climber. <laughs> All right, and I'm just pulling this back slowly because I don't want to tear my transfer. If you pull it back too quickly and you find out that a part's not attached, so I'm pulling it back while I'm rubbing and I'm just going slowly, one part at a time. I would really appreciate it if you talk less while you do this. I'm sure a lot of people would apparently. All right, it's looking so pretty. Okay, and I've just got this one last portion down here. I'm gonna make sure that I've got it in all of these crevices first. Same thing, rubbing as I go. If part of it looks like it's coming up with the clear backing sheet, you can just immediately set it back down again. All right, now let me show you guys. I have some wrinkles in my, in my application. So right here, I've got a wrinkle, but watch what happens when I just rub this out. Okay, so even though I've got this all on here, I'm still not done with the application. The other thing I do is I go along all of the edges. 
where I grabbed oh, this. Thing. So this is the redesign with Prima finishing pad. And I'm going to go here. I can put this back up here now. Oh, thank you. So you guys can see it. Being careful of my body because all my paint is unsealed still. So this is the edge where I'm going to see my transfer that I can, so I can continue to run this along the top drawers. Okay, but I'm going to use the finishing pad and this is I think this is a really cool thing to see how it, it is going to kind of mar my paint just because it's unsealed paint but that's okay because once I add sealer those white marks will disappear it's just the chalky finished paint gets chalky when you touch it but adding a clear coat over the top of that will take that right away oh good question does this come in silver as well it does come in silver as well uh -huh. i just got the silver one it comes in silver and in black also so this is just a really pretty you know way that i can combine transfers if i'm going to combine like this is a good combo because um florals will go well with a geometric whereas it can be hard to combine two really busy designs but a floral and a geometric will complement each other And so this is kind of that maximalist look that I was talking about. Now I've got a spot right here. This is where I cut it and I'm not super happy with that edge. I actually ended up losing part of my edge. So watch what I'm going to do with that. Um, it's magic. I had all of other oh, there. You can save all of these pieces from this transfer. These are all my leaves. Okay, and I know that I want it, I'm gonna layer on this drawer, I'm gonna layer some of the flowers. So these buds I'm gonna save, but I'm gonna look for a leaf. And I will kind of find a spot that makes sense for me to put a leaf on here. Kind of like that right there. Something like, like that. Let me make sure this is a good one. I kind of like the curvature of this one too. Nope, that doesn't work on that spot as well. I can kind of dry fit and see. It's a brown one. Do I like the brown? So this is what I'll save these portions of the leaves for. I kind of like the brown because I've got a brown leaf right here and it ties in with that. So I think I might use the brown. And then I'll find my placement. Okay, and that gives me this layered effect which is what I'm after. I want it to look like the Harlequin and the floral kind of weave in and out of each other. So I save those leaves so that I can weave them in and out of the Harlequin as I need it. Okay, so I'm doing my moldings. So are you putting this on over wax? No, um, uh, on these corners is where I have that super light waxing. Again, okay. <laughs> it's the hardest thing for me to explain, I swear. Um, again, Transfers do not like wax. So, so little wax, you guys. Like it's probably only because it's not detectable. I didn't wax the whole drawer. Most of it is, is um, unsealed paint. So far, I've not even gotten to a portion. You guys saw me, what I did with that um, brush is I just tipped my brush, my corners like this. So I will put, put my transfer onto that portion. It's so, 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 so little. It's wait, wait, how did you do it? <laughs> now that you tossed it. <laughs> yeah, out of the way. Um, so yes, transfers do not like wax. Wax is a resist. Another one of those things where I know that I'm working within a small limitation and it might take me a little bit of rub, more rubbing there and I'll have to be more careful on those portions. But the reason I choose to do it before is because what I find is if I do it afterwards, the wax wants to hit the edges of my transfer and it will actually um, emphasize the edges of the transfer because it's adhesive. And so it wants to kind of get, get stuck on those edges and actually makes the edges of the transfer more visible. So I try to do it before. Okay, so I like that. And I've got some, you know, all these spots where I kind of discolored my paint. I make sure I go over all this with my finger, press my transfer into place, get all those air bubbles out. So you guys want to see this 
edge together right here? No. I don't think... I'm just kidding. I'm not sure that I want to go all the way around this corner or if I want to stop at this flat edge. What do you think? I probably want to wrap it. Now. I'd say wrap it just because the other side is wrapped with the floral. Okay. Which means you won't wrap it. You'll just go to the edge. <laughs> all right. So here, let's see. And this paint again is... This is Wiesel paint and this is um, Black Cherry and Weather Bane are my two colors that I'm using. All right, so I need to seam um, part of this transfer together again, which means I need to cut off that edge that has that clear halo on it so that when I seam it together, I don't see that. I already cut it off on this side, and now I want to cut it off on the side that it's going to meet up with. I'm not cutting onto the print, just right up to it. I'm going to end up like... This transfer is going to be totally cut apart. I did order two of these transfers. I think one will get me across the front drawer, uh, drawer, but I thought about putting a little bit of the Harlequin like coming down, maybe just like two squares here and one down here. And then if I'm going to keep those center drawers, I'll put it on the inside too. Okay, so now I need to find where I can see these together is going to be this Harlequin right here. And I'm going to butt these right up to each other till I don't see any of that purple in the center. I'm making sure the top matches and the bottom. This is really odd to put it in with, I'm gonna have to put my drawer down. Like, Go ahead. It's just hard to hold the transfer. Gravity's working against me. So I'm gonna bring it down here and I'm gonna butt these two up against each other. Okay, till I don't see that purple in between. And I'm going to press it into place, and that's going to seat it right in the spot that I want. Okay, right there I like. I'll press it down, and that seats it. Okay, and then I'm going to, I can kind of tell, I'm just going to cut it right on this um, seam in between these two pieces of Harlequin. The more, the longer I have these, this transfer hanging out, um, the bigger my chances are that I'm going to end up messing up a part of it. Yeah, the more nervous Sean gets. Yeah, Sean gets that I'm going to ruin my transfer. That right there. All right. And I need to do this top with my razor knife, so let me get this attached. Okay, I'm going to seam up at the top here, all the way up. And that gives me where I can cut. Now I can roll this up and make sure that this, because I'm going to keep seaming pieces all the way across the front of this and I don't want this to stick to itself. I will have scraps, little scraps that are just going to be waste. I try to make use of most everything. Um, the only area on this that I really tried to avoid with the transfer is this molding right here is really beefy and it's got a lot of curvature. It was not easy to do. I, I did end up having to paint in just the really inner corners of that molding. Um, so I tried to avoid as much as possible. Like if I'm going to add a leaf, it's not going to be over this because I do not want to put transfers on there. It's the hardest part. So I try to keep that in mind too when I'm putting a design together. Like when I did this leaf on the top drawer, I made it fit onto this top drawer. I do not want to come down here. I think it would look better if you did. <laughs> I'm sure you do. It just, it, it brings the cohesiveness together. <laughs> yeah, well, we're going to be a little non-cohesive then. Just for practicality. All right, I'm trying to look at this from a weird angle. All right, and then I can pull this up. And I'm just gonna go really slowly, working one edge at a time, making sure this sticks, because this has a lot of curvature. And then I've got this, this edge corner over here. I'll push this down into that curved molding first, and then I'm gonna push it down with my fingers and go down to the next level. Just one level at a time. I'm not trying to do all the edges at once. 
And then this is where I cut that end. It's the perfect stopping point right on that corner. Gets me right to the edge of this drawer. That's just pure luck that I don't have like a big piece of the Harlequin that I had to cut. <laughs> Sherry says, perhaps the Easter Bunny will bring us some Wise Owl and Prima goodies. Oh, yeah. I have an Easter project I'm going to share with you guys. I know it's probably late for Easter projects, but I think it was a, is a fun little project that I did. So I have some Easter stuff I'm going to be sharing with you guys. Um, the Easter Bunny might have just gone shopping today at our house. Why would they go shopping at our house? <laughs> well, I mean, he or she, why, why would, why would so, that happen? So here's, okay, so I have a, I have a 16 year old, right? <clears throat> and so my kids, uh, my oldest learned that when he no longer believes in the Easter Bunny, he gets to become the Easter Bunny. So he went shopping with me. And uh, he gets to help pick stuff for his brothers. Which Can is, he fund the Easter it's Bunny? It's kind of cool to have like somebody now to take with me, and he gets to pick out like what his brothers like, and um, and then when we get to his stuff, I'm like, okay, what do you want? Yeah, yeah. So he got some like um, he got some like uh, sparring gloves, like uh, boxing gloves. Oh, did he really? Yeah, just little sparring gloves. Okay. Um, what else did he pick? He picked like a Bluetooth um, receiver. Um, but he picked some pretty cool stuff for his little brother. So I think it's fun to see him do that and like start learning the process, you know, when he gets to become an Easter bunny now. Oh my God, are there kids watching? <laughs> <laughs> Everything <sighs> prior to this was a joke. Yes. Yes. You can't become the Easter bunny. Yes. You, complete disclosure. One and only. This was... Non-factual yes. data. <laughs> it was a what-if scenario. I feel so bad. Da. <laughs> All right. Uh, turn your turn your TV off, kids. It's time to go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> That's like catching okay. the wrong channel on the yep. TV. Keep moving. <laughs> Keep moving. <Yes. laughs> Spoiler alert. Oh, yeah. oh, my gosh. Ooh. All right. Let's put this in and see what it's looking like. That's super fun, huh? Maximalist, I told you guys, right? Um, I think it's totally going to be fun. And then if I bring some of this Harlequin down so it just pops in a little bit down here and a little bit down here, that's kind of my plan. So let me show you the hardware that goes on these. This is my hardware, and I can just pop these through the... Um, I know, the Sherry, lots of crying kids right now. Oh, my God. Oh, man. <laughs> Dang it. Feels super guilty right now. Oh, Cindy, I never have a clue what the Easter Bunny's bringing. I'm that dad. Yeah, so what do you guys think? I think that's really, really fun. I don't know how to do this right here. Really don't want to put any more transfer on this molding right here. Really was not I think, fun. I think it would look really nice. Yeah, I think if I just... I'm kidding. I'm, if I leave some open areas and I just skip and it kind of appears yeah. right here, it's kind of what I'm thinking and like kind of weaves in and out a little bit. That's kind of what I want to do. So that's really pretty, huh? Oh, Michelle says, geez, don't, just don't wreck Christmas. <laughs> What's going on with Christmas? For, for us that don't know. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, my middle one is uh, 13. And so, I mean, we almost have, we almost have a second Easter Bunny too. Well, yes. Yeah. Well, we, I, because we, let's, we, let's get it. Oh, God, we definitely, it. I don't want to just in case there really is a child listening yeah. in somewhere. I've, I've held on to it as long as possible. And so I, I, uh, how about when he was, he's been checking us up on the, the thing hanging on his door. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I got busted on that one. Here's what they do. Okay. Here's the tough part. I don't want to send your kids out of the room, guys. If you have kids, send them yeah. out of the room. Cause, um, so my 13 year old, he's, he, knows right he's suspicious and so he lost a tooth and he didn't tell anyone and put it in the pillow <laughs> and he's like huh the, the tooth fairy hasn't come for like a week now and i was like oh my god <laughs> and then he smiles at me and i was like you little brat like you are calling me out right now and he knows but i've changed it <laughs> And he hasn't said anything. No? Oh, no. so then the Tooth Fairy did come, yeah. and now he just doesn't know because he the figures... The Tooth Fairy gave him some shut up money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't tell your brother. And shut we'll, your we'll mouth. Cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> so I haven't heard anything about that. <laughs> So it looks like this are really fun because this is it's super over the top. It's going to be really pretty and fun. It's not for everybody, but I love she's a very, she's a very adventurous decorator and this will be the second bathroom vanity that I've done for her and she'll tie in all the accents in the bathroom with all this. So all the, you know, the really bold gold and her light fixtures and stuff like that. So I mean, I love I love doing a variety of things. I've got super clean modern pieces coming up that are really simple. And then doing this type of looks so that's absolutely maximalist. And I feel like for those of you who do custom work, it's really important to show a range because people won't come to you and ask you for something unless you show it. So to show that I can do this, but I can also do mid-century modern, like clean, crisp lines. And I can do, you know, smooth, simple blends, you know, with just paint and so I think it's important to show that range, even though it might not always be everybody's taste, but this is, I mean, this is a fun look. I love putting this stuff together. Um, usually customers will give me the pieces, you know, she wanted gold, she likes Harlequin, she wanted white flowers and the resin top and purple. And like, you, you just give me like some pieces like that and then I can kind of put them together how I see fit. So don't be afraid to do stuff that might not be your personal style or some people are going to say, some people are going to say, oh my gosh, that's way too over the top. And some people are going to love it and do the full range. So they're, they're all your customers. Um, I love working with all of them and seeing how everybody has like a different vision and it's really fun to collaborate sometimes with um, other people's vision. So, so thankfully she trusts me a little bit. All right, you guys, it is late. I have a new piece coming out on my YouTube channel, um, some Easter projects coming up for the Easter weekend, just some fun little stuff. If you're doing crafting with family, like I think this is a fun time. My aunt and uncle are staying with us from out of town and it's a fun time to do egg dyeing and get everybody around the table and do some fun little crafting and stuff too. Sure. So I've got some of that coming up. Thankfully, Christmas is on a Wednesday this year. So a brandy ruin. Yeah. Is less likely. Uh, no, I'll spoil it. The, I'll spoil it before Christmas. Yeah, not on Christmas yeah. at least. Bring your kids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, Children free zone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, feel so bad for that one. I'm pushing this into the corners with my with a t-shirt. I don't want to tear this transfer. It is a little fragile until it's sealed. Um, being this the gold. Um, Wait a minute. Is that my t-shirt? This is the one you were wearing to work today. I huh? just it got a, it. It was a rough day. Yeah, We're that's coming. urban camo. <laughs> Looks like some crime happened over here. <laughs> Brandy camo. Yeah, look at this side. That's definitely seen some love. T-shirts oh. make the best rags though. Like the white t-shirts are my favorite rags. Like I will buy you t-shirts for you to wear them for a day just so it can become my rag. What? Yeah. Well, that's weird. <laughs> All right, you guys, so check out my YouTube channel for some furniture coming up. Yes, happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter, everyone. I hope everyone has a beautiful Sunday with your families. Um, lots of egg hunts, some ham dinners. Um, you know what I just realized? What? Well, I got lamb chops for Easter, and now I feel, now what's that? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Is the Easter bunny have to go? I mean, Yeah. Was the Easter Bunny friends with the lamb? Is that, I don't know. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> sure, he says the smell of Jim's t shirts will ruin any piece. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe bleach them first. Bleach. Nope. Smells like, smells like paint, sawdust. All right, guys. Um, everybody have a great <clears throat> Easter. Check out my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Um, and I'll have a new, uh, new video. I'll have a furniture video and a fun crafting project video coming up this week. And um, other than Oh, that, North, uh, sorry to uh, cut you off. I'm really tired of you talking. Oh, you know what? Maybe if you talk too much, you can stop and I'll just narrate from behind well, the scenes. Some, it's just you. I did some talking last week. And, Nora um, said that, uh, I'm going to cut you off again, just so I don't forget. Nora said that the DIY wax is water-based. It is water-based. Okay, that's good to know. I, I actually talked to Debbie this week. I should have asked her. Okay, well, then in that case, then it, the water should incorporate. I wouldn't add too much and, and then skip what I said about it being a petroleum-based wax. So I try not to listen to you. Yeah, they have a nice wax. It's a, it is a nice wax. All right, you guys.
And that would definitely work for the shading with wax that I do. And then I, I don't have, even have to, I don't, I don't have, have to interrupt you. You interrupt yourself. The only thing I'll say, if you're doing the shading with water-based wax, when you go to brush clear coat, if you are brushing, it will want to pull the wax. And so um, I, spraying is ideal, but other than that, you have to brush very gingerly if you're putting on a water-based wax and just doing shading like that. So just be careful of that. Every wax, are we, are we every good wax now? is different. Every wax is different. They can are just, all different. Can you finally just stop talking? Yeah, I know. Shut up, Randy. <laughs> all right, you guys. Thanks for watching. I will catch you guys next week. Have a great weekend. Happy Easter.